I mean, again, he, he doesn't know who Gabriel is, right? Because he didn't come from an Abrahamic faith. The people of Mecca were pagan. The Quran has mentioned if this book was from other than God, they would have found in it many contradictions. If a book is without contradictions, that has no bearing on whether it comes from God or not. I've had phone books that are inerrant, but I certainly don't think God gave them. <laughs> that we believe without understanding. The brothers asked a very important question that most of the scholars say that listening to music, watching movies, and most of the television programs, they're haram. So how can we have fun? Let me tell you, brother, at the outset, that having fun is permitted in Islam as long as the fun is halal fun. <laughs> that the standard narrative has holes. The prophet That's tells us because Satan or the devil sleeps over our nostrils. Those who oversleep and not pray Fajr on time, Satan urinates in their ears. I really do think Jesus was crucified and that he really was dead and buried. He, he thought that he was a son of God in the sense that he was specially chosen by God. I think Jesus really did think he was going to be the Messiah, the future king of Israel. I mean, that is, after all, why they crucified him. Hello everyone and peace of Christ all of you. I hope my voice coming in good and clear. Please invite your friends and let us have some good time together. Uh, you know, yesterday we made a video and as you know, I don't keep my videos uh, in my channel, but I'm sure many of you repost them again. Uh, I, I wanted to go actually and do Bible study today, but uh, for some reason YouTube uh, you know you have to like step verification and I do it and it confirmed and then still it asking me to do so anyway I hope they will update that and we will be able to do it maybe today or tomorrow again I mean we can go live if we can uh, so the topic is can God forgive sin without blood sacrifice uh, I noticed that some some Christians, you know, uh, you know, some people they are really coming from the cave time, and they don't they when they read a verse from the Bible, the Bible is a is a is a book of books, not even a book. Bible is not a book; it's a book of books. And what people do, they are the same as the Muhammadan, very shallow. And. Uh, you know, some of them even they are stubborn, like, you know, they have a head of a, of a, like a wall. So one of you will say, is, well, in the Old Testament, it says uh, you have to, uh, you know, like sacrifice animals, sacrifice animals. Uh, and uh, so, is, isn't it, this is what the Old Testament is saying? It doesn't matter really how much you try to educate people. If they don't want to educate themselves, you are speaking nothing, you are saying nothing. How come there is somebody he was able to find a verse about sacrificing an animal or a blood of an animal to purify, not to forgive sin? or even about forgiving sin. But isn't it the same Bible, it says that like in Isaiah chapter one, that your sacrifice is not really, not making a difference for God. What I want from you for sacrifice, what is exactly you can sacrifice to God? Do you think God he is really like do God need blood? Why is God is a Dracula? Even Dracula is a fiction story. To what purpose is the multitude of your sacrifice into me? The Lord said. What is the purpose exactly? I am full of the burnt offering 
of rams and the fat of the fed beast. And I delight, I delight not, I delight not in the blood of all the animals you are giving me. So people, they see when they want to see and they go blind when they want to go blind. And when somebody says, you know, if a Muslim he is lying, I understand he is a Muhammadan. But then, if a Christian he says yes, it's required. Then why Jesus said to many people in his way, through the time he was going teaching, go and your sin is forgiven. Did you see them giving him a goat, a, a lamp? No. The blind man, he can't even afford a sandwich, maybe for himself. The women, the men around him, go and your sin is forgiven. So people, when they speak, you know, I notice, uh, Muslims are Christians. Uh, Muslims, they, you know, they have an agenda. Christians, they, you know, I mean, they hear two words and they repeat them. You know? When it was a man on the cross, and Jesus said to him, Today you will be with me in heaven. But this guy he gave, you know, did he sacrifice? I mean, the guy, he will, he's not killed yet. He will be killed. And he will be killed because he was not a good person anyway. When Jesus and Matthew, he said, which one is easier? Which one is easier? To say your sin is forgiven? Or to say, get up and walk? Which one is easier? Get up and walk? Well, I thought, Somebody is saying that you need to have sacrificing blood in order to forgive your sin. Very shallow understanding of God and understanding of our belief. And that will be used by the enemy of our belief, or you are giving them a chance. To say things is not true. Which is easier? So if I was the blind man, and most of us we are, sadly, and Jesus is walking by, what I'm expecting from Jesus. This is the same God, the God of the Jews. So should I give him a goat? <laughs> and then he will be satisfied, and then he will forgive my sin? Sometimes I find that people, they have a little, you know, tiny understanding of the Bible. I don't want to be insulting, you know, but sometimes, you know, insulting is good. Because it's an insult what you say to God by making God as if he is just a person who is thirsty for blood. When the Bible speaks, totally the opposite of a bloodshed. We have tons of examples of Jesus forgiving people sin and nobody give any sacrifice. None. Actually, since Jesus came to this earth, he never asked anyone to do sacrifice for him. 
what happened. When God, he asked Abraham to give his son as sacrifice, and the Muslims, they copy this story from the Bible too, right? Was he really interested in killing a son of a man? Is that really what the interest was? Obviously not. To the point that even God himself, he stopped Abraham, and he sent instead an animal to be sacrificed or sacrifice. Some people, they say I'm saying the word, word wrong. Excuse me, English is not my first language. But when God, he gave a sacrifice instead of Isaac, he gave it to whom? Who exactly he is giving this sacrifice for? To him? But he is the one who gave it. To Abraham? Abraham have a lot of animals. One animal more will not make any difference. And Abraham actually did not even have it. Even the Muslims, they believe too. He's stealing the story from the Old Testament anyway. That the fire came from the sky and consumed. So all what the sacrifice is in the Bible is that life is very valuable. And you are a very sinner person. You are a very bad person. And you give the most precious thing asking for forgiveness. Your life should be taken from you for the sin you are doing. So giving the sacrifice is of a blood is a symbolic how bad your sin is. And you understand that. And you know, we as a human anyway, we kill animals every day. So it's not like something, you know, like we are doing evil. If this is a human sacrifice, that's, that will be really evil. But as you see, God is not asking us to sacrifice our kids. When he asked Abraham, Abraham, he is showing the obedience of, to God that the most be loving person to him is willing to give. But God did not let it happen. Then in the Bible we see the word, the Lamb of God. The Lamb of God. And this is goes like everywhere, like you will see it tons of times in the Bible. So if we go as an, as an example, John 1, Here you notice that all the sacrifice was a symbolic of a Christ himself. He will be the Lamb of God. God do not need your sacrifice. And God do not need anything anyway. But the story we as a Christians we believe in, and the Muslims try to fight it, because it demolished their cult, that God, he loved the whole world, and his love is so amazing to the point, even the blood I have, my blood, is going to be shed for you. It is not the purpose. The purpose is love. 
and it's not God he is shedding his blood himself. You see, the Muhammad and the try always try to make it as if Jesus, he killed himself. Why God do you want to do that, you know? As if Jesus, he said, hey, come, kill me. This is not what Christianity teach. Christ, he knew what they will do. Christ, he knew who was going to betray him. He knew what even they will say when they come to arrest him and take him to be crucified. Even though he knew Christ is willing to do the maximum of love. That God, he humbled himself to be humiliated to be cursed. People curse him. People laugh at him. People say bad words to him. And when Christ, he was forgiving sin for those who never gave any sacrifice in their life, like the blind man or others, or the one who cannot walk, which one is easier to say, forgive your sin or stand up and walk? Because talk is cheap. So we as a Christians, we are not people who worship blood sacrifice. We worship Christ. And when we say that the blood of Christ, we are not talking about, I am killing Christ to sacrifice him to God. We are not talking about, we are giving humans to be sacrificed. For Jesus first is God himself. Secondly, Jesus himself, he did not come and force people to kill him. If Jesus is the one who is forcing people to kill him, then that will be a kind of madness. Will God he forgive the sin of the blind man without doing anything? The man who cannot walk, he cannot give, he cannot do, he cannot say, I mean, the guy, he's just asking for, for mercy of the Lord. And he gave him the mercy he deserved. So when a naive person, he think that God, he need a sheep, a blood of an animal. Obviously, he do not know anything about God yet. If you go to his uh, to uh, to Samuel as an example, first Samuel. But Samuel declared, Does the Lord delight in a burnt offering and sacrifice as much he as much in obedience to his voice? Behold, obedience is better than sacrifice. Behold, this is what is better for God. So human beings who disobey. When he practiced some kind of rituals, like you go to a church, you light up a candle. Do God need candles? What he would do with those candles, exactly? It is you offering something to show that you really appreciate what you have. And the offering is not really going to go to the storage and the warehouse of God. He created you. He created everything you have. Which one is easier? 
to say your sin is forgiven or stand up and walk. And you will see that God, he always rebuked the Jews, regardless if they give sacrifice or not. And even he punished them. Which means your sacrifice is not accepted. So sacrifice is not like a, a magical word you say, and then this God, he will let it go, and whatever you do, you, you feel free. The same as the Mohammedan believe. That's it. When we do sacrifice, our sin is washed. What is important for God is the obedience. Sacrifice is just a symbolic for what you. Present to God as an action saying, I am sorry. You should take my blood. I don't deserve the life you gave me. You put me in this earth and I turn it into misery. I polluted this earth with filth. There is no purpose of any sacrifice if you are not obedient to the Lord. And then when we see that Jesus, he came to this earth, coming to the earth itself is a sacrifice for him. Sitting with those people, you know, I mean, I get disgusted every day. And I am not, I'm not even close to be God, you know, uh, to be an angel, to be a prophet, to be even to consider myself a good person. And I get disgusted. So imagine the Messiah himself, how much he sacrificed by coming to this earth. Living between the filthy mankind with their evil. If you look at me here, the story in front of us as an example. Jesus is doing nothing but a great work for, for society, for the community. People are angry from him. Is he a thief? Did he kill somebody? Did he break the law? For them, he is a bad person. For them, he is doing things they cannot do. For them, he took the attention from them because he is a superpower. And he is simply saying that he is the person who can forgive sin. And then, when Jesus, he proved to them that he can forgive sin, and forgiving sin is the easiest thing to do for him. Which one is easier? Was the Jews satisfied? They were excited. Oh, thank you. You made the guy, he you know, stand up and walk. They were upset. For sure, not all of them. Some they glorify God, and some they start planning to kill Jesus. The decent one, the one who have a good heart, is they glorify God. Look what he did. He just made this man who cannot walk, walk. Or this man who cannot see, see. For them. And those are the learned people, the rabbi. What he does is a blasphemy. Many Christians today, they are the same as those rabbi, Jewish rabbis. 
They love to throw rocks at people. They love to judge people. And they claim that they are the best. And you know, claiming to be the best, I find it always is a habit of those who they are the worst. Those who they are the worst between mankind, they are so proud. They think that they are holy. They think they are the highest. They think they are the one who is the good ethical ones. The one they have ethic, only them. They think they own God. We have a person, I think he's a Muslim. He's saying this question, let us, you know, obviously this, you know, this is an example, by the way, that it doesn't matter what you say. People say things, unless he just entered the chat, I don't know. But I think he is here for a while. Just to give you an example, that sometime, you know, in the Middle East, in, like, uh, we have a statement that there's a guy, he decided to teach the donkey how to talk. So he sat with him for 40 days, and after 40 days, the guy, he came, talk, came out talking like a donkey, and the donkey is still a donkey. The donkey is still a donkey. And it doesn't matter how many times and how much you explain, the donkey is not listening. So here we see this uh, gentleman we are trying to show some uh, respect so he will not get hurt. Why God had to sacrifice himself instead of directly forgiving? Because first of all, I want to ask you, who is the idiot he told you that God he had to sacrifice himself? Where do you get this from? Either you are an idiot who say things without knowing what you are saying, or you are a smart, educated, you can prove it to me. Who said that he have to? Isn't it the Bible says, for God he loved the world, he sent his only begotten son. For God he loved the world. He don't have to. God, he created you, he can delete you, he can create other nation. Who said he have to? People, when they speak, this is why, you see, this is why I believe that the biggest sacrifice Jesus he did is to be between us. I mean, look at those are human. It is a, he gave them a brain. See, we are giving a brain. But they don't want to use their brain. We just showed you a verse in the Bible. Jesus saying to a man who cannot walk, go on your sin, it's forgiven. And you say, why Jesus? What's wrong with people? Jesus forgives sin, and there's no bloodshed. Jesus forgives sin, and he did not do the, go to the cross yet. Why people are so silly? Jesus forgives sin for a person who is a criminal next to him in the cross. So there is lying creatures. They go around and they spread lies about Christianity. God, he forgives sin without any bloodshed. And God, because he is loving. Because he is loving and because he was so peaceful with us, we human, we killed him. Now for sure, you can't really kill God. I mean, here we go, you kill Jesus, he is back to you, nothing happened. That's why Jesus says, you can destroy this temple and I can rebuild it in three days. And the three days is symbolic for the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Otherwise, the three days is not required. It can be three seconds. It can be one minute. It can be a second.
God forgives sin in the Old Testament, in the New Testament, for people not because they give a bloodshed, but because they repent and ask God for forgiveness. And those who lie trying to make a Christianity a belief of a bloodshed, those are lying people. They are trying to deceive and they are trying to destroy the love of Jesus. Jesus, he did not really love you. Jesus, he come to die. When this is absolutely a big fat lie. Jesus, he did not call the Jews to kill him. We believe in free will. Jesus, he did not tell the Roman to put him in the cross. We believe in a free will. Jesus, he did not ask them to put nails in his hands. So all what you say is in a pure lie. And all lies come from Satan, your father. Nobody believe, not even a single Christian believe. And I know they will quote for you, Jesus say, the Christian, they say, by the blood of Jesus, we are saved. By, by the blood of Jesus, we are saved. That's mean that Jesus who come to this earth. And he was so loving to the point, even his blood. He gave for free out of love. Imagine you have a king. And this king, he sent you his son. And this son is coming in a mission to save you. And then you put him in the cross. But the king, he did not send his son to be crucified. This is not what he really want. This is what you want. And you will notice that even Jesus really is not really interested in the cross. That's why he spoke to the Father, saying at the end, let your will be done, which means, well, if you don't want them to, to stop them, to stop them from doing what they would do to me, let your will be done. Who said that Jesus was so excited to go to the cross? Hey, kill me, I wanna, you know, he didn't. that's absolutely a lie. So we as a Christians, when we speak about the blood of Christ, we speak about his love and how much he was willing to give to the point even the cross did not stop him from loving us. If there is any question? Well, my friend, if you want me to ask you to answer the question, why you are calling yourself retard? And no. And here you see a retarded person, he called himself retarded. Saying, can I get to clarify on the belief that Jesus is the Father in the Bible? It says only the Father know when the end of time. I didn't know you believe, you know, what is, what, what, where, does, where you get this is from? What kind of a Christianity you believe in? Did you learn your Christianity from uh, Abdul magazine? Jesus is not the Father. The Father is the Father, and the Son is the Son. Secondly, if Jesus knew what they will do to him, and you are saying only the Father he knew the future, 
That's false. When Jesus said about the judgment day, that only the Father, for only the Father have the authority to announce that day. But if you read in the same chapter, you will see Jesus, those things will happen. Number one, number two, number three, number four, number five, etc. When those things happen, I will come. So here you notice that we don't believe in the predestiny set time. We believe that the Messiah is teaching us that the more we polluted the earth, the faster judgment day come. So God, he did not set a day of the day of judgment. If you go and see the stories of Sodom and Gomorrah and etc., you will see that if there is 10 believers, God will not destroy the city. 15 believers, he will not destroy the city. 20 believers, just for a few people, he will not destroy the city. So when the judgment day will come, when this earth is totally polluted. Uh, Zakwam, Zakwam, saying, We believe that Jesus is the Messiah and the prophet of God who received the gospel and he will return. Well, this is a Muhammadan. Well, you know, uh, if I ask you, Zakwam, what is the word Messiah mean? As long as you say it, we believe that Jesus is the Messiah. Do you know what the Messiah means? This is what you said, right? I will put it in the screen. I want you to tell me, as a Muhammadan, what is the word Messiah mean when you say he is the Messiah? I'm waiting for you. <laughs> what Messiah mean? <laughs> You know, Muslims are like, I'm not making fun of you, but Muslims are like a bunch of kids. They have beard. They learn a word and they walk around with it. They don't know what it's mean. What does the Messiah mean? Are you there? It's a comb. By saying that you believed in the Messiah, that means you believe that he is your savior. And that will not make him a prophet no more. Because a prophet is just a warner. Isn't it your Quran says that your prophet Muhammad is a warner? Hmm? Is he a warner or a savior? I want you to tell me, please. Here you will see the Muhammadan is looking in Google, trying to find a solution for this problem now. Hmm? Is he a prophet? A savior or a warner? The Quran says he's a warner, unless you're against the Quran. So, Muhammad, because he is a fraud, because he is a fool, he did not know what the word the Messiah mean. He copied it, he put it in his book, but by doing that, he just admitted that Jesus is God. For no man can save you. No prophet can save you. Only God can save you. And that is Jesus. Do we have any other Muslim want to say anything? You see, one of the things about Muhammad is a guy, he steal your car. And then he think, you know, like he's, he changed some things in the car, like the car, how it looked like. So let us say uh, your car was Mercedes. Muhammad, he put uh, uh, Ford. 
sign in the front. And then he's hoping that you will not notice that he is just a stupid thief. If you remember, when the dad was making fun of the story of Israel, the video is there in YouTube. You can't search it. God is wrestling. God is wrestling. <laughs> wrestling with Jacob. <laughs> Stupid. He is amazing. And the Muslims are so excited. This is a scholar, brother. But you idiot. The Quran approved the story. How we know? Isn't it the Quran says that the guy, his name is Israel? What Israel mean? <laughs> if you are making fun, that is that that uh, uh, Jacob he struggled with God, and this is funny, stupid story. So why you Quran adopt the name? Suddenly we do not know even what happened. The Quran never mentioned who is this guy Israel. He just copied it from the Bible. This is why we laugh at Muhammad and we laugh at his book. It's laughable. You make fun of why, how Israel, he struggled with God and then you, you accept the world and you put it in your Quran. Same time, have you ever heard of a stupid religion like this? It says, oh, children of Israel, but yet did not tell us who is Israel. Who is Israel? If we go in the Bible, we will see who is Israel and why he was called Israel. If we search the whole yellow pages of Muhammad, we will not find one place. Who is this guy Israel? Hey Muhammad, can you tell me who is Israel? Can you tell me what the word Gabriel mean? You don't know. Mikael mean? You don't know. Ishmael mean? You don't know. Abraham mean? You don't know. What Allah mean? You don't know. Even because Allah is a name of God stolen from the Arabian Peninsula. You do not know what the name of your God mean. They don't know what they are worshiping. They do not know what, what, what those names are all because simply it is a theft. You know, it's, uh, Muhammad is like somebody. He's trying to make, to have a PhD. And in order to make, a, to have a PhD, you have to make like a study, right? Your, your, uh, your th th these, thesis, they call it thesis, thesis, uh-huh. And then Muhammad, he go to Google, and this time the Google is the Jews. And this time the Google is the Sabian. And this time the Google is the fiction stories of the Roman. And he put them in the Quran. He took the names as it is. He took, I mean, he had a lot of details as it is, and he had some spices to make it his own. This is why when you ask Muhammad any question, he have no idea. As an example, I mean, Muhammad is a prophet. Have you ever heard of a prophet? You ask him what is the spirit, he say uh, Allah knows best. And not only him, he is saying Allah knows best. Allah is saying Allah knows best. They are asking you about the spirit. Say the spirit belong to uh, the domain of my Lord. What the heck is that? They are asking you, what is the spirit? When you say spirit, what does that mean? <laughs> what spirit mean? Have you ever heard of a prophet? He goes for two weeks and then he receive a revelation from his God says, Allah knows best. And you know little. Well, they are, this is what they are asking you. You answer them saying, you know little. Shouldn't you tell them what it is? Imagine you ask me a question, what is the spirit, Christian Prince? You claim that you have knowledge. I say you know little. 
The spirit is uh, in the order, uh, my Allah, he knows best. What is the answer? And as long they are asking you, obviously they are saying, we have no, we have little knowledge. We need your guidance, sir. So what you say to them? You say to them, you have little knowledge? Is that an answer of a prophet of God? Imagine we ask this question to Jesus. And then he says to you, you know, uh, Allah knows best. And then we check in Allah, we will find that Allah, he know nothing. And this is why the answer came in this way. If you read the verse after it, I challenge any Muslim to tell me what does that mean? They ask him about the spirit, and he said to them, You know little. And then he says, If we willed, we could take away what we revealed to you. What does that mean? What's wrong with this guy? You are telling that to who? If we willed, we could take away what we revealed to you, then you will find yourself with no pro a protecting and guardian against us. Against us? Allah is the enemy. You see, in Christianity, God is your aid. God is your helper. God is your supporter. Here, this God is your enemy. And that explains why in different hadith, Muhammad, he said, If you don't commit sin, if you don't commit sin, let me find the hadith. Allah will destroy you. <laughs> why? Why, Muhammad? Why? What is exactly the purpose of this God, Allah? The whole Bible speaks about if you commit sin, you will be punished. In Islam, it's the opposite. <laughs> Have you ever heard of a stupid cult like this before? Have you? Read, and I challenge you not to laugh. Muhammad, he said, Qatham ibn Abdullah, by him in whose hand is my life. If you were not to commit sin, Allah would sweep you out of existence and he would replace you by those people who would commit sin and seek forgiveness from Allah. And he would burden them. Do you see what is Islam is about? Do you notice what I'm talking about now? Just think about it for a second. Relax. Let us bring the sad guru. His name is Sad and he is a guru. Relax. Imagine yourself now you are a magnetite. You have a positive and negative. And both sides of you is opposing each one of you. Relax. Yeah, hippy tippy stupidity. Say word mean nothing. Just for the dummies who like to hear things have meanless. 
sometimes speaking stupid give bring comfort to some people relax sit in your bar look at your bar you have a cushion your bot have a cushion relax okay i get it i have a bot it have a cushion and what does that exactly mean uh, i have some bills to pay and electricity and internet and relax you have a you know people are dying hungry in india and the guy relax and he is living in a villa he have servants he fly in first relax hmm. this is how they fool people are you relaxed? I'm not relaxed because it's so cold in this room. I turned this heater, it's useless. Anyway, relax. <laughs> so look with me. Relaxed by him in whose hands is my life. If you were not to commit sin, like why, why, why? If we don't commit sin, this God will kill us. Why? What, what's what the problem? What is missing? This God is sick. The Muhammadan they worship a sick person is mental. Because he did not create you to not to do sin. He created you because he want people to say, please God, forgive us, please, every day. And he like, okay, 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 okay. Okay, kiss my shoes. Okay, kiss my shoes. Yeah, okay. And kiss my toes now, okay? Uh, yeah, I kiss there too, yeah. Bow down, bow down. Yeah, now kiss my black stone. Uh, and now go around this room. It's like a bathroom. Go around it and kiss it and lick it. And there's a black stone in the shape of a vagina. Put your head there. And now God, he relax. He's positive and negative. This God is a lonely, sick God. He's enjoying torture. He's literally enjoying torture. Because this is a torture. If you don't commit sin, you know what I will do to you? Or what Allah? I will make you shish kebab, okay? Uh -huh. Look, what the heck? Why? Because you did not commit sin. Well, I thought I should be a good person. Oh no. I don't like good people. <laughs> uh, so you see a huge difference between the cult and the false religion we can't even call it a cult it's just a scam you know it's like a cult is have to come from something a little bit truthful i mean this there's no truth in this religion uh but the story here in front of us is showing us that this god who Muhammad is creating in his in his frame is suffering from a kind of a mental illness and and that reflect the mental illness of Muhammad you know if we ask Muslims where Muhammad he get this from any Muslim can tell me this is Sahih Muslim hadith number 2749 Sahih Muslim this is Sahih, they can't say it's Daif. Uh, I hope you can expose this guy. Hey, my friend, we are here exposing Muhammad. Who is uh, Hamza and Bamza? Don't be silly. Don't come here and say stupid things. We are getting busted, the biggest Abdul. The rest, they don't come for me. If they want, they can call me. And can, you, can you expose this Hamza? What, Hamza is hurting you? Hey, this guy is a kid. He is saying lingerie. A lingerie guy is hurting your feeling. How? How weak you are? <laughs> Here we focus in the head of the snake. We don't care for the little puppies. If they are really brave, here we go. We are here. You know, we challenge them every day, and we don't challenge them. Actually, they are no. no they, are, they have nothing. I mean, those people they don't even know how to say their prophet name. So don't come here with silly and I you know I hate it when a Christian he say can you expose this guy and he give me his name why well, you cannot expose him yourself are you a potato 
obviously you are a potato. Here, we smash the head of the snake. The rest, we have to wash. The head of the snake, which we demolished. And they try to duct tape the head of their prophet. But they cannot. That's why they don't dare to call me. Uh, just don't mention those names, please. I mean, this is, this is really stupid. The guy, we do not need to do bully, you know. Who is this guy, Hamza? Is he a scholar? He didn't even have high school. What's wrong with people? You want to do the same as David Wood? He go and, uh, and he debate, uh, what his name, Bomar? This guy, he don't even have a driving license. Don't waste your time with the stupid kids. They can say whatever they want. Here we, here we speak in a level of knowledge. Not a Muslim kid making YouTube. If you are a kid like them, go there. Honestly, those Christians, they are weird though, the same as the Mohammedan. You know this guy, he's saying this, he's a kid. As long as he is a kid, you can get him busted. Are you, are you so I, I know what I'm saying. I open my Skype so people can call me, and then I don't call it a debate, you know, because, I mean, I don't know who's calling me. He's a sheikh or he's a stupid Abdul who do not know anything about his religion. That's why we don't call it debate. Uh, let me open my Skype just to give you an example. When we open our Skype, they don't call. After I go, uh, uh, like, uh, offline, they say, we will challenge you. I want to call you. Like, Abdul, I am on... I stay online almost every day. Like, look at this guy here. This Abdul, he said this in the, in the comment. He's a Shia. He said, the Christian prince, I am a Shia and I would like to challenge you to do Mubahala. Do you know what Mubahala, mubahala is? <laughs> do you know what Mubahala means? This is additional. Uh, let us drink something. <coughs> Thank you, Lord. This is additional proof that Islam is a stupid, and if you follow it, you are being stupid. Mubahala is, he will call me. He will say, "May Allah cut my nose if I'm lying." Your turn, Christian Prince. Okay, Christian Prince, he take the microphone. Okay, may Allah broke my teeth if I am lying. Your turn. Okay, my, may Allah close the door of the van over my private part. Your turn. This is Mubahala. Can you believe it? This is how they debate. When the Christian, they came to Muhammad to debate, this is how he want to debate them. Let God or let Allah curse the one who's lying, you stupid idiot. Are you saying that your God will punish, will not punish you unless you ask him to punish you? I mean, do you see the stupidity? So now this Allah will not cut my nose unless I ask him to cut my nose. May Allah destroy me if I'm lying. Your turn. And then you keep doing that until one of us get tired. <laughs> so what if you are a, a 10 years old kid who can speak until tomorrow, and I am an old man, maybe 80 years old, and I will get tired after two hours. That's mean you are right and I'm wrong? <laughs> Stupidity. A scam. It is a scam, my friend. Oh boy. Let us do Mubuala. Cowards, because they cannot answer any questions, they cannot debate. So let us curse. This is a cursing party. May Allah curse me if I'm lying. <laughs> First of all, who is saying that you are lying? You see, the, the stupidity of saying that, like as an example. If a, if a Hindu guy, he says, I believe that rats are gods. He believe in a lie, but he is not lying. Because this is belief. Lying is you saying something against what you know. Against your belief. So when David Wood, he asked me, Mi Hijab, your God have hands. He said, who said so? He's lying. 
because he knew very well and actually he said that in different videos that yes Allah he have <laughs> Allah he can have he can be inside his body part in, in, inside his creation so there's a huge difference between a believer and a liar a believer who believes in a lie is not lying <laughs> he's not he believes it's true But the belief you believe in is a lie. There's a huge difference. But because Muhammad is a liar, and he do not know how to answer the questions, so he said, let us do this cursing party. <coughs> and my throat is hurting me. Too many hours online. I'm logging in Skype, it's taking time, let us see. And look like even, let us see here. Do we have any Muhammadan? <coughs> well, maybe my internet is bad, because I see even uh, uh, there's a, the death sign in YouTube buffering. Okay, now it's working, let's see. And why Skype is not loading? Let us try again. Let me exit Skype. Not even exiting. Oh boy. Let us try. All right, Skype exit. We will try to log in again. Is my voice coming right, guys? Let us try again. I don't know, yeah, Skype is taking too long to, to log in. Maybe my internet is slow. <laughs> anyway, you know, this hadith in front of us actually is a great example that Allah is, a, is not a true God. He doesn't exist. I mean, this is a fiction God. But Muhammad who is behind this God and he is making things up He's, Muhammad is literally stupid. There's no human being. He have little brain. He will say what he just said. How the Muslim they keep saying to us that Islam is against sin. Islam, you know, Allah, he don't want us to commit sin. And if you commit sin, you are a bad person. And then Allah, if you don't commit sin, he will destroy you. All what Muhammad he is saying here, that he have a sick, ill, mentally ill God. He's playing games with us. He created us for one purpose. He wants us to commit sin. You need to commit sin, otherwise I'm angry from you. This is totally against the teaching of Christ totally against the teaching of the Bible, totally against anyone who have little ethic. Allah is not ethical. This is not ethical. How many of you saved this hadith? How many of you did save the reference for this hadith? I advise you to save it because this is a very powerful statement. This is a statement here enough to prove to us that Islam is a fraud. 
This statement alone, you do not need more. It's better than 10 books. What Muhammad is saying here, you are required to do sin. Allah, he wants this earth to, fill of, to, to be full of bad people. Allah, he don't like this earth to be a holy place. Allah, he enjoy rapists. Allah, he enjoy thieves. Allah, he enjoy criminals. Allah, he enjoy child molesters. For later, they will ask him, please forgive us. What kind of game this game is? So if you did not save the link, please save it. We are giving you reference. And as you see, this is a very authentic hadith. This is Sahih Muslim. The Muslim, they cannot say, oh, this is a fabrication. Well, better than a screenshot, always, if you can save in your memory, if you have a good memory, like you can, uh, remember, Allah would sweep you out of existence. Just remember this phrase. And you can search for it anytime in the internet and you will find it. Allah will sweep you, will sweep you out of existence. For some reason, I cannot log into Skype. Maybe they have difficulty. By the way, uh, later to, today, maybe I'm going to post a link. I will make an announcement. Uh, we have uh, uh, one of my books translated into the Romanian language. And as usual, I will give it out for free. So if you are a person who speaks Romanian, if you have a friend who knows Romanian, I hope either today or tomorrow, I will, I will pause the book and you can download it and you can share it with your friends. And for, for some reason, I could not, uh, could not log into Skype. And by the way, just for the sake of security, if ever my Skype, somebody send you a file claiming to be me, like using a name close to my name, or even my name, never take a file from me. I don't send files in Skype. I don't send pictures. I don't send anything. And the only time I will send the link, if I'm talking to you, like now, live, you know, and you are calling me by voice while talking. So if I talk to you and you are a Muslim debating me, then I might give you a link because you could not open it in the chat. But I don't give, give, give links. I don't send pictures. And I advise you, if you have a person who uses Skype, never open those things from anyone. Especially if you are dealing with the garbage of Muhammad. Oh. Can you explain jihad is going to Jannah become a bird? Well, there's no explanation for it except Muhammad is being stupid again because, uh, you know, uh, if if you if you are going to you know sac sacrifice your blood, you know this is this is a human sacrifice for blood, and then after you sacrifice your your blood. You will become a green bird. So how you will have sex with the 72 versions? You will use your peak. Hmm? Any Muslim can tell me? This is additional example that Muhammad is mentally ill. I mean, this guy, he says stupid things nobody can even take for a second. Which is that? So now Osama bin Laden, he created a, a group of terrorists and he is following the order of Allah. And now you go to heaven and Allah will make you a green bird. 
I think now Sad Guru will get jealous. And I believe that this is coming from a Hindu, something have to do with the Hindus. So how he promised me 72 at least women to have sex with them, and now I'm a bird. Are they birds too? Madness, you know, stupidity, crazy stuff. Like now the Mujahid is so happy, hey, I'm going to heaven. And he entered the heaven, he turned into chicken, green chicken. And now he has 72 girls in the front of him naked. And he's saying to them, Parut, Parut. Like, what the heck? Osama, my name is Osama. Like, oh? What those girls they want to do with this guy now? He's a bird. They will put some seed in their private part. And he will use his beak to pick it up. Madness. But he can say, I mean, this is Muhammad, he can say any, anything. This guy is just a stupid idiot, you know? He's a certified idiot. You know, thank God, I don't want to go to such a heaven. I don't want to turn into a chicken. And this is called a reincarnation. This is a Hindu, uh, you know, the Muslim, they say we are not Hindus. Zakir Naik, he says, we and Hindu, we have the same concept of God. So now you are a good person, Allah will turn you into a bird in heaven. Isn't it this is a Hindu teaching? Muslims, isn't it this is a Hindu teaching? Hmm? I challenge you to say this is not. If God can take a human form, why God cannot take a form of an animal situation required? A man, animal, and some animals are smart like dolphin. And this guy is a philosopher, and he decides to scratch his head, and he come with the, with such an answer. Let us see what he said. Let us put it in the screen. <laughs> So our friend here, he says, Car Carabito, 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 I don't know what his name. He said, well, if God can take a human form, why cannot God take a form of an animal situation required? What situation required mean? I don't know. Is that, I thought my English is horrible, but I think... Your English is horrible more than mine, you know. A uh, man is an animal, and some animals are smart, smart like dolphin, etc. First of all, my friend, the Bible says that God, he created Adam in his image. That is the image of Jesus. So when we say that God, he became a man, well, God created Adam in his image. So the creation from the beginning was a creation of a man in the image of God. So you don't understand Christianity, obviously. Secondly, in the Bible we have that the Holy Spirit or the Spirit of God appeared as a bird in the sky. So it is possible for God's Spirit to come as a bird. No problem. That will not change the nature of God. But when we speak about Islam, my friend, we are talking about a, a guy who was promised to have sex with a lot of women. They are women, and he's a bird. So your comment has no connection with our topic, and you are being silly. You are literally being silly. It's like just somebody want to say something, you know, he has something in his, he throw it from his mouth. So for us, who said that God cannot? No, our God, he can. He can come in any form he wants. He's God. That's why we call him Almighty. When we question Muhammad speaking about the Mujahid, he become a bird. Well, if he send him to a heaven full of birds like him, I will say, okay, the female are birds too. But this guy, he been promised women who he will sleep with. 
Do you understand? So I am a bird now, and I going to have women, human, human, not chickens. So why you promise me seventy two versions at least? Didn't you promise me seventy two chicken? So what we notice about Muhammad, that this guy, he say things, is against what he say himself. And then those who they die for the sake of Allah, they ask Allah, we want to give us our body back so we can go and kill more. Look at this, look at this. They cry for Allah saying, give us our body and send us back because we want to kill more. So Muhammad is trying to make human being a vicious dog. He want to bite more. He don't have enough bloodshed. Please give us our body so we can go back and we kill more. Very sick cult. This is sick. This is very sick. And then when Muhammad, he, you know, he described more about his heaven. I mean, we die laughing about this heaven. Uh, this heaven have a tree. You can walk underneath of it for more than a hundred years. Uh, what, okay, so what is that tree for? And what will happen real, real? I mean, we have a tree, you walk underneath of it for 100 years. Okay, and what does that mean? And then, brother, there you will find a nightclub. Uh -huh. And next to it, there is a mall. What? There's a mall. Well, what is in the mall? This mall, there's magazines. <clears throat> Magazines? What kind of magazines? <laughs> Six magazines. <laughs> Porn magazine. Have you ever heard? And this, by the way, this market open every Friday, in case you do not know. Just in case you do not know. Every Friday only. It doesn't open the whole week. <laughs> uh, the Hadith says here. Let us show you this Hadith here. Hadith, in case you do not know what Hadith mean, mean a speech or a statement said by Muhammad or his companions. Or which means his gangs, the mafia. The chapter name, the market of paradise. <laughs> they will get there of delight and beauty. What they will get there? <laughs> In paradise, there is a street, this translation is saying, by the way, it doesn't say street. In Arabic, it says la suqan, which means a market, a bazaar, which they have would come every Friday. Okay. So this is every Friday. And in this bazaar here, it says, a wind will come from the north and would scatter frequency on their faces and their clothes would add to their beauty and loveliness. No. Relax. Sad guru. And then you go back to your women. Your family translated as a family, it's women. After having an add luster to their beauty and loveliness. And their family would say to them, by Allah, by Allah you have increased 
and beauty. <laughs> So this is a Friday market of a beauty salon. Now let us go to the other one. <clears throat> this is the beauty salon of Allah. Here we have different story. The messenger of Allah said, in paradise there is a market which is nothing bought or sold except images of men and women. And if a man like an image, he will enter it and it will become his. And in paradise there is a gathering of Al-Hur, Hurul Ain. Those are the women, but they are so, so, so white to the point you can see their bones, the marrow of their bones, who raise their voices. So what Muhammad is saying here, there's, we, have a heaven in, uh, we have a heaven waiting for you. And in this heaven, we have a bazaar and this bazaar, there's market, there's no buying nor selling in there except pictures, images. Images of men and women. Images of what? Of men and women. And then the man, the man, he chose an image to have sex with it, which means homosexuality in Islam approved in heaven. As you see, if a man he like an image, there's no, the, the customers, all of them, they are men. If a man he like the image, he will enter it. Image of what? Image of men and women, as you see. And any image you enter, that will be yours. So this is a sex magazine, but it's different from a paper picture. You will jump in this picture and you will have sex with the person in the pictures. This is heaven, according to Muhammad. Who can make better heaven than this? And you know, the Muslims are worried about Trinity, hey, there's no Trinity. Don't you worry about the garbage in origin? You see, if God is one or two or three, forget about Trinity. Let us say there's a God, there's somebody believing God, and this God is one million God. Why a Muslim is worried about the one, what difference, what difference is going to make the number of those gods? If it's true or not, what make a difference? So if somebody believes in one million God and they are true God, well, he's a winner, you're a loser. So the question is, do you Muhammadan believe in one God who is true? If he is true, what is this garbage in front of us? This is really God speaking here? Sex magazine? There is any, are you going to practice any like protection or something? Because the same picture, Allah knows how many men before you jump with it before you. And you know, uh, once I asked a Muslim, I shared a video there on YouTube. He said, a, a Christian Prince, what's wrong with you? I told you in heaven, there is no sin. In heaven, there is no sin. You can do whatever you want. You have sex with men, you have sex with... Even I asked him, what about if it's your mother or your sister? He said, what's wrong with you? I told you in heaven, there's no sin. I know what's wrong with Skype. I cannot log in. <clears throat> we will try later again. So anyway, uh, I'm try I tried to go today in life in my other account, Bible study, but uh, YouTube keep asking me to verify my... Uh, my account I verified still is not letting me go it says it's done but I could not go so maybe I did some update maybe that will take some time maybe and then we will we will try to do some Bible study from now on in our other account uh, any 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 question before we leave for today anyone because I need to go and watch some magazine I'm not going to tell you what kind of magazine, to be honest with you, okay? But I want to go, you know, a magazines. There's a magazines, and there's a prophet who come to my house. And he told me, if you believe in me, I will give you a kind of magazine you cannot resist. I said, like, what? He said, this magazine, you open the page, you jump inside the picture. 
to what? Are you sure? He said, listen, guaranteed. I said to him, how come you don't jump first? He said, I don't jump in the pictures. I am the picture. What the heck? Are you asking me to jump and have boom boom with you? He said, not exactly, but if you wish. And this prophet, his name is Prophet Muhammad. A picture. How is called Jesus in Quran is Isa? Well, this is because Muhammad is a fool. Muhammad in the Quran, he said, just to make it easier for you to understand. According to Muhammad, Mary is the sister of Aaron. Aaron have a sister, her name is Maryam, Mary. So the stupid Muhammad, he thought that Maryam, the sister of Aaron, is the same Maryam, the mother of Jesus. <clears throat> Uh, and this is why he called the father of Mary too. He called her, he called him Amran. This is the same name of the father of Moses because he's stupid, Muhammad. However, Muhammad he heard from some Jewish tradition, not from the Bible. In the Bible, Maryam, she don't have children. But I believe that Muhammad, the idiot, he heard that Maryam, she had a child, her, his name is Esau. So Muhammad, he thought that this is the son of Maryam Isa or Esau. And this is why Maryam, she is the sister of Aaron. All right. Because no Arab Christian, he used such a name before. We never heard of Isa before. Never, never. You will find not a single Christian, Arab Christian, he knows such a name. In Arabic, we call him Yeshua. Yeshua, the same as in Hebrew says Yeshua. And actually, even the word Arabic in Arabic, Yeshua is not Arabic. This is coming from the Aramaic. You see, Aramaic, in certain dialect, they say, this, they say letter seen as sheen and letter sheen as seen. So, Yeshua or Yeshua, or like some, some Aramaic, they say Sems instead of Shems, you know, uh, or Shemsh. So, they have different dialect. So Muhammad obviously is copying. Is the cousin of Muhammad is the one who corrupted, used corrupted Bible according to the Muslims? Well, uh, you know, uh, we don't know what he was using. Uh, this guy, uh, Waraka. Uh, but what we know for sure, obviously, uh, he is, you know, he is himself, he is, was following a cult. He is not a Christian. That's why they call them Nasara. See, in the whole Quran, the word the Christians never appear. The Quran speak about the word Nasara. Nasara is a word used in a certain time for those who have, it's coming from the, the word poor in Hebrew, poor. So those are a cult like Jehovah's Witnesses. They've been rejected by the Christians and they call them such a word or they have a poor understanding of the Bible, not because they are poor with money. They are poor with their understanding and they are rejected. So obviously Muhammad, he never met the Christians. You see his translation says the Christians. Nowhere in the Quran use the word Christians. In the word of Christian Arabic is Masihi. The word the Quran is used is Nasara. And Muhammad himself, obviously, he tried to claim that the word Nasara is coming from the word Ansar, which is a stupid of him to do, you know, because he didn't know what the Nasara from Nazaran, Nasara. It's not have, have not to do with, with Ansar. Ansar is helpers or you know supporter. So uh, 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 Isa supposedly in uh, you know chapter three verse number fifty two, he said, "Who is my Ansar?" Ansari This is why now you heard the news that there is a, a, a militant in Yemen 
they are shooting missiles at Dubai, right? What they call themselves? Ansarullah. They got the name from there. Ansar Allah. And here you ask yourself, why Allah need Ansar anyway? The helpers of Allah? <laughs> Allah need help? <laughs> the way it is amazing. Anyway, so, so when Isa, not Jesus, he sensed disbelief in their part, he said, who are my Ansar toward Allah? Okay. I have a question that Muslims uh, take a chapter in the Bible. God allow to kill people by stone. They make me, me I don't know. If you want to say something to me, make, make the sentence make sense. We know that Muhammad, he copied, and actually even the Hadith it says that Muhammad, the Jews, they, saw, they showed him the verses of stoning to death and obviously this is where Muhammad he got from but now we cannot find it in the Quran why because supposedly there's a goat who ate the verses there's a goat who ate the verses and now Muslims don't have it and it trust me I mean there's no way uh, the reason that the verse is not there because of a goat ate it like a breastfeeding for adult and 10, ten times breastfeeding for adult and the stoning for death is eaten or ate by by a goat. But if you if you you know if you think for a second, relax, sad guru time, relax, okay. So if you think for a second, you will find that there's no way that the verses is missing from the Quran because a goat ate them. Why? Isn't the Muslim they say we well, recite Quran by heart? Well, the goat she ate the paper. She did not eat their heart. You know what I mean? The goat, she ate the Quran, but she did not eat their heart and their memory. So how come none of them he memorized the, the, the verse? So what I believe, that the one who ate the, ate the Quran is the Muhammadans, which is not the goat. Because if the goat he ate the book and the Muslims, they collected the book from the memory anyway. The goat she got in, she ate the she ate the book, okay, no problem. But did she eat your memory? Right? So obviously, the story here <clears throat> is a cover up. Is a cover up or a missing chapters in the Quran. And those chapters, I believe, they are in purpose. Somebody made them disappear because it's an embarrassment. It is an embarrassment. So when we have something embarrassing, we try to hide it, all of us. We, we, wear, we wear our clothes, right? We don't show our private part in the street because it's a shame. We believe it's a shame. If we don't believe it's a shame, then we go naked in the street. When people, they hide things, they hide it, especially about behavior, you know, it's because of a shame. So the goat, she ate the verse, so, Hmm? <laughs> All right. Somebody saying, uh, Ramish Gamit, truly, I tell you, Mark fourteen nine. Okay, what is the question? Why is not so now? What does that mean? I mean, sometimes people, they say things very weird. Why not so now? What does that mean? Speak English, my friend. Can you share about history of, uh, of Christianity in the Arab? First of all, the word Arab, 
you know, many of you mistakenly keep thinking that the word Arab uh, mean an ethnic group. So when I say I'm an Arab, I'm saying I belong to an ethnic group. Arab is a word coming from the Aramaic language, and the word means those who live in the desert. They are not one nation. Not one nation. There's many nations. Even the Old Testament mentioned that. So whoever live in the in the desert is an Arabian. The word Arab or Arabia is a word mean desert. It's not a name. It's not a name. For you, because you don't know the language, you think it's a name. It is not. All right. Anyone who live in the desert, the Aramaic, they call them desert people. Simply, when you say Arab, they say the desert people. And desert people mean people who live in tents usually, but then by time they start having houses. Uh, uh, you know, the, the, the reason they are uh, Bedouin, the word Arab present Bedouin, because simply it's not a green land. So you will find that those people who live, live in the desert called this way because they keep moving from place to place. Why? Because they don't have a source of water enough to stay in a place. So when, when the water became less in an area, they carry their tent and they move. And if they find a spring of water, they stay there. All right? This is why you see, in, even in the Quran, <clears throat> it's called the Arab, and the Muslim translate the word, the, the Arab, which is the Arab, as a Bedouin. See all those words? Arab, 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 Arab. Who is the Arab? The Bedouin. Bedouin. Here it says desert Arabs. You change the translator, you will see it says Bedouin. So they are Bedouin who live in a desert. Because, you know, there is other form of Bedouin. They are gypsy, but those are not really Bedouin because they don't live in the desert. The gypsy, they move from place to place, right? But they don't live in the desert. You know, most of the gypsy, they live in Europe, maybe, you know. Um... <clears throat> Fardhan al-Majid, he said, David Wood could not fulfill requirement that Zakir Naik asked for 10,000 Christians. You know, uh, Fardhan. So now if I say to you, I will debate Zakir Naik only if he get me 10 million Muslims. That will be an excuse for me not to debate him, right? That is really stupid. And actually, I'm glad that Zakir Naik and David Wood did not debate because neither of them is fit for a debate. The debate they will do, 10 minutes for you, 10 minutes for me. Everybody, he say things have nothing to do even with the topic. So both of them, they are not fit for a debate. Secondly, your Zakir Naik is an idiot. Isn't it? This is the guy who said that the word whore is a pearl word. It's a female and male. And he said to a Muslim woman, Sister, don't worry, the word hur, the word hur is a poor word. And the word hur means male and female. So inshallah, sister, Allah will give you a lot of male for you in heaven. But isn't it your stupid religion, Quran says, that Allah, he will give you hur, who they never have a period? So how the stupid idiot, he come with the conclusion that the hur is for male and female. So at least bring us somebody he, you know, he's, he's fit to, to speak about his religion. This guy is a donkey. How the word whore, the video is there, go watch it and laugh. How the word whore is a for male and female. This is the one who want to debate you, debate us. This guy, I will whip, I will, I will put him in my socks like Santa Claus in two seconds. Hur is a word mean male and female.
What a scam. Or the word ha ha, brother. The word ha ha mean an egg. Like, what the heck? Where, the, where he get this knowledge from? The word the ha ha mean an egg. The word the ha ha mean a flat. Every single Muslim translation, he come with that. What is the egg? <laughs> this guy, he, you know, this Zach and Naik, he learned the word the ha ha is an egg from a kid. He was making a video to refute me. Honest to God. The first one who come with this, it was an, a guy, his name is Wadi something. He was trying to refute Christian Prince. He made a video saying that the word the ha ha is coming from the word dhiya and the word dhiya is an egg. Stupid Zach and Naik, he copy it. And wherever he go, he say it. But if you ask any, you can search right now. Is the word the ha ha mean egg? This is your Quran, and I will show you all the translation you have in the word. What is the word egg? It's the opposite. It's we split the earth flat. <laughs> so the stupid second neck, he heard the kid trying to refute me. You can open the dictionary. So this guy is just a stupid, you know, he, he's a smart for the stupid people like you. Hold on, he's calling. Hello? Christian Prince, I heard you. Like, what the heck? I thought you should be sleeping now. First of all, I don't sleep. I am watching you 24 hours every day. Like, Zachary, like, why you are watching me? I'm going to curse you. Like, Zachary, behave. Don't curse me. What do you mean exactly you want to curse me? Are you going to make me bewitched? Christian Prince, I believe that I'm going to contact some Jewish the people and they will be with you. Like, what the heck? Please don't contact the Jews. The Jews will put a spell on me. And then I will go to my wives and I will not be able to do boom boom. Mr. Prince, even if it cost me $1,000, I'm going to do it. Zach and Nag, don't make a threat. Life on air, I record it. If anything happened to me, if somebody put a spell on me, like the Jews they did to Muhammad, I'm going to go after you. If you ever try to put a spell over my private part, I'm warning you. This is this is a red line. Don't go there, Christian Prince. I trained you today to have sex. What? Because already I paid them. You did? Exactly. And now the Jewish people they are going to put a spell on you. Let me call Zach Talon. Zach Talon, did you put a spell on Christian Prince? Habibi, Habibi. You paid me $1,000, Habibi. I told you I want $1,000 and the interest, Habibi. So you have to pay the interest in the top of the $1,000, Habibi, so I can do the bill. Salam, we made an agreement yesterday that I will pay you $1,000 to pay this bill on Christian Prince. Habibi, this is what yesterday. Pay the interest, Habibi. Huh? My name is Tawiba Singer, and I'm doing business. Zakir, the Jewish guy will not do it. You have to pay him the interest. Christian Prince, I'm going to order the Muslims, 10,000 Muslims to give me donation. And I'm going to make the donation and I'm going to pay him. All of this to do harm my private part? Christian Prince, your private part is not private no more because it's public part. What the heck? How is that? Because this belongs to all of us. Zachary, you are getting dirty now. I will hang up on you. Hmm? The Jewish people, they put a spell on the prophet private part. I mean, who in the world want to believe in such a garbage? Zachary Naik. Even his last name is dirty. All right. Anyway. <laughs> uh, how I understand Zachary Naik? Oh, I can tell you why I can understand Zachary Naik. Allah, he taught me the language of the birds. And this is why I understand the language of the ants. 
like what happened to Solomon. <laughs> Allah, he taught Solomon the language of the birds, and then he spoke, he, he understand the ants. <laughs> I mean, what is a mystery, man? And Suleiman inherited David. He said, oh my kind, we have been taught the language of the birds. And then Solomon, he walked a few steps, he entered the valley of the ants. There is a valley of ants in California, California, brother. He arrived to the valley of the ants because there's nobody live there except ants. You will see a flag, flag of ants, like ants, you know, ants. And they have antenna, so they like you get closer, they have sensors. So till he arrived to the valley of the ants, one of the ants, look at this, look at this. So the man, he can hear each ant alone. Like there's a billion trillion ants. Suleiman, he have a moving radar ears. So he focus in one of the ants. The rest, he don't listen to them. So one of the ants, she said, like, what the heck? What about the rest? Only one of the ants, she said that? Do you think at that moment, the rest of the ants, they were like, in the prior time, mute time, silence time? Ah, they were listening to Sadhguru. This is why they were not talking. There's one ant only outside, and she is the one watching over. Uh -huh. So here, one of the ants, she said, Oh, ants, oh, ants, oh, ants, oh, ants, oh, uh, ants, enter your dwelling, enter your dwelling, enter your dwelling. Like this is water alarm. Enter uh, hurricane, uh, tornado, uh, typhoon, enter your dwelling. Lest Solomon, what is killing me in this story, how the ant she knew that his name is Solomon. Anyone can help me? I'm trying to figure out until now how this happened. I mean, okay, she saw an army. She warned the, 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 the ants that there's, a, there's an army coming. But how she knew that his name is Solomon? Hmm? Allah, he taught the Solomon the language of the birds. Solomon, he understand the language of the ants. But how ants, she understand the language of Solomon? How she speak Hebrew? And where she heard the name of Solomon, what, what happened? Was Solomon like walking and he have like a tag in his chest or something? What a stupid story. This will remind me when I first time I joined a school, you know, uh, I mean, I was doing my master's degree. So I, I came like a month late, I think, to the school or something like that. So I entered the classroom and there was a girl. I sat next to, you know, to whatever empty table there. So the teacher, the professor, he said, you have to join group. Okay, so I choose a group. I don't know anyone yet. So there's a girl next to me when the class he finished is finished i said can i be with you i'm talking about the group that the, the, the professor he just said in front of her you have to join a group and he, he he point even his finger at the girl next to me you have to join a group ask them join one of the groups so i said can i be with you she said sorry i'm res i'm lesbian what the heck i'm lesbian <laughs> sorry i'm lesbian <laughs> so Second day, I saw her in the cafeteria in the morning. I say, hey, lesbian, how are you? She got so upset. <laughs> she came to me, she said, what are you saying? I said, what? She said, why you said uh, hello, lesbian? Said, Yesterday, I told you I want to be with you. You said to me, I'm lesbian. I said, nice to meet you. I said, do you think this is really my name? I said, really? It's not? <laughs> <laughs> I said, well, excuse me, English is not my first language. I don't know. <laughs> uh, Muhammad is a lesbian too. Alhamdulillah. Anyway. <clears throat> uh, hiding identity, coward. Uh, Fardan, Fardan. Yes, Fardan. If you have my identity or not, you are the coward. 
because yeah, people are not interested in my identity. Let, let me ask you, what is the identity of your God, Allah? And isn't it your God, Allah, is a female who hide behind the hijab? Here we go. This is your God, Allah. He's wearing a burqa. I'm not. And I go and I do seminars and Muslims attend. The coward Allah, he never, never showed to your prophet, not to you. And he claimed that he is speaking always from behind the veil. Do you see it? Chapter 51. Chapter, chapter 42, verse 51. This is the God you worship. He's hiding his identity. I'm not God. Your God is wearing a veil. Your God is wearing a burqa. He's a coward. And it's your prophet who ran away, hiding his identity. He changed his name. Your prophet name is not Muhammad. Stop complaining about me, Abdul. I'm not a prophet. And I, you cannot debate me. And here we go. David Wood, he don't have hidden identity. He, I'm not going to debate him unless he has 10,000 people. <laughs> so you use any excuse. The one who show his identity, you don't want to debate him. The one who don't show it, I don't want to debate you. I will find any excuse not to debate you. <laughs> the God who wear a burqa is not God, my friend. And your God is a lesbian. Prove me wrong. If we ask Muhammadan, by the way, is Allah male or female? Any Muslim want to answer? You guys, do you hear me? Let me see. Is Allah male or female? Just wait for the answer. They will not dare to give you the answer. Muslims, is Allah male or female? Anyone dare to answer? Simple question. They don't dare. I will help you. The Quran keeps saying it is he. So is he a male or not a male? Hmm? The Quran says it is he. Is he a male or a female? Do you want to call a friend? Any Muhammadan? Why well, it's hard to answer? And if Muhammad, if your God Allah is not a male, why you call him he? Anyone? So why you complain that Jesus, how Jesus can be God and he's a male? Yet you keep saying that Allah is he. Hmm? No answer. Any, any simple question about the religion, they will go in chaos. And they will try in the speed of light to change the topic. If you are a man, stop debating us from behind computer. My friend, I debate from behind computer. What's your problem? I am Allah, he's, I speak from behind computer. Allah, he speak from behind the curtain. I am better than Allah. Hmm? Any Muhammadan? 
Any simple question, the Muslims, they will be in chaos if you ask them. Islam is a religion as long as you don't ask questions. The second you ask questions, they go crazy. Like, look at this verse here before it. How can you disbelieve? Seeing that you were dead and he gave you life. They were dead and they gave them life. Is that true? Muslims? Those people, they were dead and he gave them life? What story is that? People of Quraysh, they were dead. And Muhammad, he gave them life? <laughs> you were dead and gave them life? When? Who is being silly here? What is that? And now the Muhammadan, he would say, okay, no, we have to go and read the interpretation. Okay, if I show you the interpretation, you say, I don't accept it, it's made by a human. Hmm. How Allah, he created the earth. Any, any question, you know, it is just read and laugh. Just read and laugh. He is he who created for you. He is who is talking? Allah. So why is saying he? If the one is talking is Allah, why he is saying it is he? Shouldn't he say I? Is that a language mistake? Any Muhammadan? What is the guy who said uh, identity? Who is who is Allah talking about here now? And things go more stupid, like in different verses. As an example, where Allah He says, "May Allah forgive your sin." Like what the heck? Who is Allah speaking to? You see, when when they say to you, "Oh Allah," He speak as a third person. Okay, why why He do that? Secondly, when he say that may Allah forgive your sin. How how that work? In which language? Hmm? May Allah that may Allah forgive your sin. Who's talking Allah? So Allah is saying, may Allah forgive your sin. Muhammad, and I'm getting dizzy. Are you getting dizzy with me? How come Jesus, he says, go and your sin is forgiven. Go and your sin is forgiven. Not me. Allah is God, and He say, "May Allah forgive your sin." Obviously, the one who is talking is not Allah, or He is other Allah. I have a question: Is Muhammad mentioned in the Quran? Sure, yeah, he mentioned. There's a chapter. It's called the chapter of Muhammad. Very ugly chapter. Any Abdul? No, the Muslim they don't say that Jibreel is talking here. The Muslim they believe that Jibreel is the one who delivered the Quran. But the Quran, whatever you see in front of you, is the word of Allah. And look here. We, we given you victory. Okay, Allah is one or many. You ask a Muhammad, and why Allah, he keeps saying we. I mean, all this is a silly language. They say to you that the word we, Allah, he used for it is more majestic. Any Muslim agree with that? 
Why Allah he used the word we? Maybe we should go live on air later, maybe, I don't know. And we make a topic and uh, that title, Why Allah he say we? What do you think? Should we make a video just about we, we, we? We, 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 Allah is saying we. Why? And how this is majestic. So Allah, he could not find a better to make him majestic than using we. So that's mean Allah is not happy by being a single person. That's mean Allah is not satisfied with himself being I. He like to be we. Shall we grant Allah the wish? Break him pieces? Because if the reason for Allah to use the word we as the Muslims they claim, you know what, let me do this. I will search in Google, Prophet Google, try to find an article. I should go soon actually. I don't know what, they keep saying we should go. My throat is hurting actually. Why Allah used the word, I'm typing in Arabic. I hate it, you know, when I type, like, especially when you type for like five, five minutes, and then you look at the screen, you find yourself, you are typing gibberish now. Hmm. <clears throat> okay, I found an article. <laughs> look, those are the scholars are answering, by the way. Those are the scholars. The mean of the pronoun, we as used in the Quran. All right. Why does the Quran use the term we in ayats? Many non believers believe that this is mean, it's being a reference to Jesus. Answer Praise be to Allah. Hey, Abdul, why you say praise to be Allah? Why you don't say praise be to, to we Allah? <laughs> I mean, the question is why Allah he says we? You say praise be to Allah, you should say. Praise be to we Allah. We Allah. Not Allah. Shame on you. Okay. It is a feature of literary style in Arabic that a person may refer to himself a pronoun, nahnu, we, for respect or a glorification. He may also use the word ana, I, indicate of one person or a third person, huwa. He or three styles are used in the Quran. So look what happened now. When Allah he used we, he want to add respect to his name. <laughs> so look what happened by saying this. Allah is not respected enough, and he don't feel that he is respected enough by not using we. So he have to add we, for that will make it more satisfying for him. Can you believe it? Uh, Prophet Muhammad, are you asking me to flood to block you? Why you are posting those verses? You see? Here you see that Muhammad is really being stupid, and the Muslim they try to duct tape Muhammad, stupidity in the Quran. By adding we, you are not adding respect to your God. That is an insult, because it is a fake we. Correct people? If Allah is one, and then he said ye we, how in the world that will add respect to Allah? He's one. And if Allah, he believe that he need to add we before his name in order to be respected, that's mean Allah is not satisfied with him being singular. It is more fit for him to be we, not I. It is better for Allah to be called we, not I. This is the purpose. You just said that. Uh, yeah, there's uh, some places in the Quran. Yeah. 
<clears throat> Do we have any Abdul? Okay, here, a tiny lily is asking question. Thank you, tiny lily. You are a tiny Muslim. So a tiny lily is saying the following. Let us put it in the screen. Uh, look what tiny lily is saying. You have a problem with Allah using we, but have no problem when Moses asks God, what's your name? And God reply, I am. How that will be a problem? Can you tell me how that is a problem? I am. So God in the Bible is saying, I am the one who exists by myself. I have no creator. Nobody created me. I am. I'm your Lord. I am your God. What is the problem? There's no name can describe God. No name is a qualified to fit with him. You see, in the Bible, you will see it says Elohim, the Jews, they use the word Hashim, Adonai, etc. But none of those are names. Why? Because there's no name can describe his glory. So when he say I am, he is telling you that I am the one. And there's no one else. He do not need to say we. However, the Bible says he used the word we because we have a trinity. And that then makes sense. But if God, our God, is not a trinity, and then he say we, that will make it a fake we. The God of Islam, he say we for what reason? You Muslim, you claim, because it is more respect. So, the, based on this, it's more better for Allah to be we, not to be one. The problem that he said, I am we, I am not we? No. Because still we believe one God. There's many verses in the Bible that says, your God is one, O you Israel. Your God, Echad, is one. So the Bible confirmed that we believe in one God. The Trinity is not three gods. So this is based on your ignorance. The Trinity is a three person, one God. So we, the three person, I, the one God. But when your God, he say, we, how he is we, yet he is supposed to be only one. Unless you believe in the Trinity. Do you? So that will be a problem for you, not for me. Right away, you go in the book of Genesis, it says in the God and his spirit. Right away from the beginning. From the first pages. And the word Echad, which Muhammad, he stole, he tried to put it in the Quran. Mean a unity, not oneness of like one, uh, what one, uh, uh, one, one person. This is why the the Bible says that he and she they will get married and they will be a chad, will be one. But one, what are they one person? No, they are two still, wife and husband. But we will, they will be united. And you Muslim, you use the word tawhid, which is a wrong word because tawhid means unification. Are you unifying God? If your God is one, why you use the word Tawheed? And just to let you know that Muhammad, you do not know what oneness of God is. How we prove it? You know, anyone remember? Anyone remember? The first time Muhammad, he learned about Tawheed, 
or sorry, or unification. It was from a Jewish guy. He schooled Muhammad and his followers, and he got them busted. And then Muhammad not only he agreed with the Jews teaching, he told them to do as the Jew he say. As the Jews he said. So a Jewish person was walking by and he said to him, Oh, you are not believing one God, you are associating others with him. Who is saying that to Muhammad a rabbi? Did Muhammad debate him? Did Muhammad say, no, you are wrong? No. And he, the Jewish guy, he got him busted. He says, you say whatever Allah wills and you will. And you say, by the Kaaba, they throw it by the Kaaba. They don't, they don't swear by God, they swear by Kaaba. So the Prophet, he commanded them, if they wanted to swear an oath, to say by the Lord of the Kaaba, and to say whatever Allah wills and you will. And here you ask yourself a question. Who is the God of Muhammad, a Jew or Allah? If Allah is the God of Muhammad, then Allah should correct Muhammad, not a Jew. Is that correct, guys? Do we agree? And as you see, this is very authentic. So when the Muslim, they say, we believe in oneness of God, the first time Muhammad, he heard of oneness, it was from a Jew. Everything he got is from the Jews. He's a fraud. Why Muhammad, his God, did not correct him all this time? They are saying the same thing until a Jew, he walked by. And why Muhammad, he agreed with the Jew? Because he's wrong, he knew. He knew whatever the Jews, they say, he will agree. And the Jew, he said, that they must be knowing what they are talking about. I think even Muhammad did not understand what the guy is saying. He just agreed. He did not dare to say, oh, uh, uh, <clears throat> yeah, uh, he cannot debate the Jew. So he said, oh yeah, you know what, from now on, from now on, shouldn't Allah say to him, Muhammad, what are you doing? And look, the Jewish guy did not accuse him that they are wrong. They accused him in something very, very scary. You are associating others with Allah, with him, which means the God. So the accusation, and the error he is fixing is not about something like how to pray, how to fast. No, no, no. It's about something extremely scary, associating others with Allah or with God. And Muhammad, he agreed. So all your, uh, you know, the... The propaganda of Tawheed and etc. It was a story from a Jew. And a Jew, he got your prophet busted in a speaking corner. And Muhammad, he agreed that he is wrong. And then he told his followers from now on, listen, don't say what, you know, just say as the Jew says, okay? From now on. Listen, Khabibi. Khabibi Muhammad. Come here, Khabibi. Khabibi. Khabibi Muhammad. Are you stupid or what, Khabibi? You told the people you are prophet Khabibi. And then you say, I swear by Kaaba, Habibi. Are you stupid, Habibi? Why do you do that, Habibi, huh? Hmm? Should I take your license from you as a prophet now? Habibi, Hamad, from now on? I have to spank you, Habibi. I have to spank you, Habibi. Okay. From now on, you say whatever Allah wills. You don't say whatever Allah wills. No, you say, you say whatever Allah wills, and you will. Okay, and you say, uh, by the Kaaba, don't do that, Habibi. Okay, otherwise, I will take your driver license. You know, Habibi, I'm a Jew, Habibi, huh? I will cancel your bank account, Habibi. Muhammad, he looked at his followers, I said, Okay, uh, listen, Mr. Habibi, he just told me. So, the Prophet uh, commanded him, if you wanted to swear uh, an oath, uh, swear by the Lord of the Kaaba. <laughs> Have you ever heard of a stupid religion like this? The one who fix the core of your religion, the core. Every Muslim, Tawheed, brother, Khabib, we witness of God, the oneness of God. And then we find that you're a prophet himself, he do not know what the oneness of God mean. And a little Jew was walking by, he got him busted. 
from Visa Card Company. Any Mohammedan? Hmm? Who is the prophet here? The prophet is the Jewish guy. Obviously, the Jewish guy. He have more knowledge of the, the, the stupid Muhammad. And here you need to ask yourself, all this time Muhammad claimed to be worshipping a god, and yet he is doing a wrong to his god, and his god was mute. His god Allah did not notice. Look, this god Allah, he noticed that the wife of Muhammad is having fight with him. This god, he noticed that Muhammad, he need more women to have sex with them. This God of Muhammad, he noticed that Muhammad, he need to be fixed his private part. But this God of Muhammad did not notice that he is worshipping him wrongly. He is associating with him other gods or items. I wish I know the name of this Jewish guy who will make a statues for him. We will call him Mr. Khabibi. Hmm? How come Muhammad here, he did not say to him, Allah knows best? It looked like the Jewish knows best. Muhammad, he have no idea. Allah have no idea. The Muslims have no idea. And whatever the Jew he say, he took it for granted. Actually, I assure you, Muhammad, he have no idea what the Jewish guy he just said. I am one million percent sure. You see, Muhammad, he did not say to him, because he's a stupid, he don't dare to say, what do you mean? Like, okay, what's the problem if I say, why you are saying we associate with him by saying whatever Allah wills and you will? Why, why, why? You know? And then, Muhammad, he fixed it supposedly. Just to show you how stupid Muhammad is. Look, the guy he told him, you associate with him by saying whatever Allah wills and you will. Okay, correct? Okay, so Muhammad agree, and now he wanna fix it. Look what he, look how he fixed it. He said, uh, from now on you say, whatever Allah wills, then what you will. Look, what the heck? <laughs> Supposedly now it's fixed. Like, <laughs> secondly, isn't it, this is against Islam to say whatever Allah will and what you will? Isn't it Allah will only? Don't you Muslim believe in the qadar and destiny? It's only Allah will. Madness, stupidity. You know, it's supposed to he fix it now. Like you know, like he add then you will. Like that's now it's fixed. Then you will. Look at this genius. And then from now on, don't swear by the Kaaba. Okay. Say, by the Lord of the Kaaba. So all this time, Muhammad did not notice that he is swearing by stones. All this time, he did not notice. Hmm. Anyway, I think we had enough for today. We will try to start soon. Bible study, if you like to subscribe, you can search for Arab for a Christ account, so you can join us there, and we will uh, will inform you when we will go live. Actually, today I was going to plan to go there, but uh, YouTube have uh, difficulty uh, in logging in, so we will see what is the issue with it. All right, so I want to say thank you guys for being here. Honestly, I need to go because my feet are frozen. It's really cold, and I have a heater actually here, but uh, <clears throat> it's very noisy, very noisy. Uh, need to get those, you know, uh, central heating, where they are very, very quiet, and etc. You know, but uh, the issue is when I say the name of Allah, Allah, He heat me up, brother. It's what the Muslims they say, you know. Allah, He warmed them up, brother. Yeah.
we make a we might make a video again later about politics if you are interested you know uh, i might i'm not sure but if it's still like uh, if it's so cold i need to turn the heater on and keep it on for some time so we can don't freeze because my feet i don't feel them uh, brand in youtube brand i don't know what the brand in youtube mean oh no no my account is fine but they just asked me to do add uh, verification etc and i did and it still keeps saying to me add verification i mean actually like like the the the, the uh, my cousin she bought a CD about how to make an egg and her CD stuck with break an egg, break an egg. This is what happened with YouTube. They keep saying to me, verify the number. We verify, verify the, the sorry, the, uh, the, like an app or etc. Verify, we do it. And then it says verify. It says, it says done, complete, perfect. You know, now go and log in. You go to log in, it's ask you verify again. So something wrong from their side. We will see. Uh, so I might I might go live on air again if you if you like to join us and I will let you know and then uh, uh, later too you might either today or tomorrow I will uh, publish uh, uh, my one of my books in Romanian language anyone here speak Romanian who here is a Romanian anyway if you are Romanian or not I uh, appreciate people downloading and reposting in different links. So one day you meet somebody, he speak the language, you know, you give him the book for free. All right. So this book is in Romania. And for sure, I'm very thankful for the person who did the, the, the translation. Uh, so, you know, we can spread the knowledge and we will give it for free. Romanian people are generally speaking poor, you know. You know, the purpose of me going giving books for free is not because I do not need uh, money. Everybody needs money, trust me. There's tons of things I need to do, like I just mentioned my heater. So, uh, but poor people, poor people are, should be an exception always. Every nation, there's some people, they have money, they can buy books, they can spend money, right? Not the whole nation is poor. But there's, it's more important, instead of having some money from the rich ones, and they get the books, it's more important to give the book to everybody and as long as the poor are maybe more than 90 percent then why i will be interested only in the 10 percent just to make some money for me it's better to give it to the 90 percent instead of giving it only to the 10 percent who can afford it and this is why we give uh, our books to countries which is known to be poor our books for free All right, Rich. So, Rich, you can, you know, later, maybe to, uh, today or tomorrow, watch, or you can join us on Patreon, and we will post a link for our book in uh, Romanian language. And we have long list of, of books for free, by the way. I mean, Indonesian, Malaysia, uh, Mandarin, Chinese, Albanian, uh, you know, uh, long list of books for free. You know, uh, and you know, all the only thing I'm afraid of that people when they see things for for free, they think this book maybe is not valuable. Trust me, my books is extremely, extremely valuable and full of a treasure of information. Treasure of information. So we are not giving them for free because they are not valuable. It is the opposite, because you are more valuable for me than my work. <laughs> uh, and I hope, uh, I hope we will have more books translated soon to more languages. I know a person working in a team, working in a Korean language. So we will see when the book is done, you know. How much your books cost out of pocket? See, my friend, my books cost my life. I spend my life studying. What cost you out of pocket? <laughs> book is not is not a dollar, my friend. Book is not a dollar. Book is not the time I spend you spend to write a book. 
it is the time you spend to learn before you make a book. So it's cost me my life. My life to write it, my life even to be killed, you never know. You know how dangerous this cult is, right? So it is literally costing me my life. I spend my life teaching this garbage, my life studying this garbage, and my life might be the price for speaking against it. And you are saying to me what it cost you out of the pocket? That's what you are worried about. Uh, would you sign my book? I don't send books to sign them. I'm not the one who shipped them. I don't have them. Right? So I don't... Uh, the first uh, batch of my books, I, in the beginning, I did sign books, you know, and send it to people. So if you are like a person who met me or, you know, when I published my first book, Deception of Allah, the first, I think, 100 book, I did sign them and gave them to people, you know. All right. So anyway, guys, I want to say thank you all for being here. And I hope we have a good time together, learning. And education is the purpose. And remember one thing. Maybe you are not too much interested in preaching to others. Maybe you aren't even Christian, but knowledge is power. Ignorance is weakness. So the more you know, the more power you have. Even if you go and sit between a group of people, you speak about any topic, it doesn't matter, religion, anything. You will have your place to be unique between this group if you are a person who prove that you have a unique knowledge. If you know nothing or you say stupid things, people will laugh at you. So you better shut up. So knowledge is extremely valuable. The Bible says, my people are destroyed because of their ignorance. Ignorance brings destruction your life, your nation, your people, your family. Ignorance. If you do not know how to grow a child, your child may, maybe one day will kill you. If you do not know how to treat a woman, your woman can be one day your enemy. If you do not know how to treat your husband, one day this man, he can be your worst nightmare. Ignorance. Ignorance is our problem. People die because they don't have knowledge about how to fight an illness or disease. Ignorance is the problem in everything. Even the desert can be turned green if you don't have ignorance. And the proof you go to Israel, they have the same desert the Arab have. They turn it into heaven. They have the same little, even less water. Why? Because they are educated. Ignorance is a problem. Ignorance brings hunger. Ignorance brings poorness. Ignorance brings diseases. Ignorance brings uh, uh, violence. Ignorance is our enemy. That's why we are not fighting Muslims. I'm not fighting Muslims. I don't hate them. I'm fighting ignorance. There's the Christians who they are ignorant. There's Muslims who they are the majority they are ignorant, actually Muslims. We are here to fight ignorance, not to fight people. All right? Love the people. Fight and defeat the ignorance. As simple as that. Uh, yeah. So anyway, I will publish the book later. Romanian. I might publish it even before I, I mention it in uh, in YouTube. I might publish the link in Patreon. We will see, and then we go from there. All right. I might publish it maybe in five or ten minutes in Patreon. So I want to say thank you guys, and we see you soon again. I might go live again a few hours from now if you like to to hear me. But this time we'll talk about politics. We'll talk about what's happening between the Russian and Ukrainian, 
be careful my opinion might not sweet many people because I don't take a side I say things as it is thank you very much may the Lord bless you until we see you soon again Christ is Lord and everything else is false thank you I mean, again, he, he doesn't know who Gabriel is, right? Because he didn't come from an Abrahamic faith. The people of Mecca were pagan. The Quran has mentioned if this book was from other than God, they would have found in it many contradictions. If a book is without contradictions, that has no bearing on whether it comes from God or not. I've had phone books that are inerrant, but I certainly don't think God gave them. <laughs> that we believe without understanding. The brother asked a very important question that most of the scholars say that listening to music, watching movies, and most of the television programs, they're haram. So how can we have fun? Let me tell you, brother, at the outset, that having fun is permitted in Islam as long as the fun is halal fun. <laughs> that the standard narrative has holes. The prophet tells us because Satan or the devil sleeps over our nostrils. Those who oversleep and not pray Fajr on time, Satan urinates in their ears. I really do think Jesus was crucified and that he really was dead and buried. He, he thought that he was a son of God in the sense that he was specially chosen by God. I think Jesus really did think he was going to be the Messiah, the future king of Israel. I mean, that is, after all, why they crucified him. 